Good evening, folks. Welcome to another edition of Sports Talk in the Berg. I'm Jesse McCulley, your host, joined by Casey Irwine, Nathaniel Kingston, and Sam Goldberg. Let's get right into it. Yesterday, the Steelers moved their, uh, from on from wide receiver Chase Claypool, trading him to the Chicago Bears for a second-round pick in next year's draft. Claypool heads to the Windy City to the 3-4 and four Bears. Do you like this move? Sam, as an Eagles fan, what are your thoughts? As an Eagles fan, I mean, honestly, from an outside perspective, I love this trade for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I mean, me personally, I don't think Claypool's worth a second-round pick, but the, way, but the way he's been playing, kind of showing that heart and toughness, even though it's been a tough season so far for the Steelers, I feel like uh, the Bears really – I feel like the Bears overpaid, but – um, overall, I like the move for the Pittsburgh Steelers. As an Eagles fan, I don't really care about your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I don't know why you were asking you that. But <laughs> I'm not going to say you're wrong. I think the Steelers right now definitely win this trade, especially because it's the Bears oh, second yeah. round pick. And mm -hmm. looking at their schedule, they have a really tough schedule. They're already three and five. They have a tough schedule, and they play the Bills, Packers, who are and but I mean the Jets. I can't believe I have to say the Jets are good. But <laughs> both crazy. Both New York teams are it's, good. But I mean the odds that that's a top 40 pick are pretty high. So I think for a guy like Chase. Claypool, whose production has been low, to get that high of a pick, that's a good trade for the Steelers. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, first off, um, I just want to say that the, the, the pick, I, get, I think the picks that the Bears have, I get, gave the Steelers was way too high. Way too high. Because he has not played as a, a good wide receiver uh, since his rookie year. Uh, and that is shows because 10 of his, t uh, of his 12 touchdowns that he's had in his career have been his rookie year. He's only scored two touchdowns in the past he and had four of those against the Eagles. Exactly. <laughs> I remember that game. The only, and the only thing I will say is that this is going to be the first time that he's going to be a wide receiver one in his career. So now he's got potential. I mean, everything else in the Bears is pretty lacking. But this, he's got potential to be a monster as a wide receiver one for the Bears. Yeah, maybe. Keeping it on the Steelers, T.J. Watt has been out of the lineup since week one. The Steelers plan to bring him back next week as they take on the Saints. If you were a part of the team, would you bring him back at 2-6 and six and risk making the injury worse? Dr. Casey, what's your diagnosis? <laughs> Dr. Casey, thank you. Well, I think you're going to keep that finally, title from now on. You can finally get some money around here. Uh, no, but uh, I, I do. they need Watt back, absolutely. Even if it's just unlimited snaps, his presence alone changes the entire team's whole game plan. It, exactly. And, it, and it, gives, it gives the Steelers on both sides of the ball so much more confidence. Even the offense, they, they're struggling right now, but if they know, hey, they got – the best, pro probably the most valuable non-quarterback player in the NFL on the other side, they'll be so much more confident in what they do. It also helps Hayward as well a little bit too because Hayward, he's kind of that run stuffer in the middle and T.J. Watt on the outside, you know, picking up sacks. But, I mean, ever since T.J. Watt's absence, teams have been just freely been able to pass the ball a heck of a lot more. And and with I, I feel like if you do bring T.J. Watt back, I feel like it'll help the defense a little bit. It'll give the corners a bit more time to play play that man-to-man -man or zone coverage or whichever one yeah, they want to do. Exactly. Plus, um, with T.J. Watt in there, it also helps out Alex Highsmith on the other side because right now Alex Highsmith is getting double teamed just like Watt did. And, at, and without Watt on the other side, um, uh, you have Alex Highsmith who's uh, not doing as well. Well, he, he's still getting some sacks, but he's not doing as well as he did last year. Uh, that is because of the Watt effect. And if you think of the Watt effect, the Steelers are 1 in 10 if Watt is not playing. So... That is absolutely that's absolutely horrible in my opinion. I mean, and the teams predict for to, to finish around 29 sacks this season. T.J. Watt had 22 and a half last year by himself. Exactly. So just b with him being back, I mean, I wouldn't say Alex Highsmith played bad. He was leading the NFL in sacks. Exactly. But just him, they they need him back, even if he only plays 20 snaps a game. Yeah. Well, with the trade with the trade deadline being yesterday, so many stars are on the move, which makes me question which one shines above the rest. Who do you? Which team do you think won out, Nate? Uh, so for me, I gotta go with uh, I gotta go with the Vikings getting this T.J. Hawkinson, this T.J. Hawkinson, and I know our audio guy today, uh, Zach, <laughs> is loving this as a big Vikings fan. T.J. Hawkinson is that missing piece that the Vikings need to go on their giant playoff push because I they're winning the NFC North by far. They are, uh, and uh, first off. The, the, the Lions, they ended up uh, giving Hawkinson to them for in exchange for a 2023 second-round pick and a 2024 third-round pick. So, if anything, 
the, the Vikings are winning this, I feel like, unless you worry about picks so much. Yeah, I mean, Big Hawk, he looks like a Viking right? with that flowing <laughs> exactly. hair and the nice beard. It's a perfect fit. But for value-wise, I think the Steelers honestly won yesterday. I mean, the high pick for Claypool. And then I'm very interested in the William Jackson trade because he was the former first-round pick. The Steelers wanted him back in the draft in 2016. They panned and got Artie Burns. But, uh, <laughs> you know, he, they said that William Jackson is much more of a man coverage guy, which is much more for the Steelers' scheme. So they've gone for basically nothing. So he's got potential to be a very solid player. And, you know, it, as, as you say, you know, it was a low-risk, high-reward type, uh, type of thing. So I'm going to stay here on the gambling side of things and with the Jaguars winning the trade, <laughs> picking up Calvin Ridley, which ironically – the two teams that uh, Calvin really bet on that got him suspended were the Falcons and Jaguars. So kind of ironic situation right there. But I love the value. And with Christian Kirk already there, locked up for a couple of years, I feel like Calvin really paired with the Christian Kirk is going to be great. Hopefully Trevor Lawrence can figure things out. Moving on to the college football world, this week we have a massive matchup in the SEC East as two top three teams in the country are facing off in Athens, Georgia, the Volunteers and the Bulldogs. And this ma massive Southern matchup, who do you got, Casey? Tennessee or Georgia? Nate Kingston, are you from Tennessee? Because you're the only <laughs> 10 I see. Jesus. I also see Tennessee continuing their streak and beating the national champion, Georgia Bulldogs. I mean, Hendon Hooker is a dog, and he's going to just ball out, I think. Uh, Georgia's not the same, you know, Stinks and Bennett. You oh, know, I, stop I, it. I like his story. Who's going to stop he's, Brock Bowers? Who? I, Who's gonna stop? Who's gonna stop Bowers? Name me one guy on the Tennessee defense that's gonna stop Bowers. You know what? Exactly. As a you know no one. No one. Exactly. Exactly. Bowers. Maybe exactly. you take a shower. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> no one. Georgia's gonna win this, no doubt. I mean, come on. Tennessee only scored three points in the second half against Pitt. Go. I mean, against Pitt. They also beat Alabama. How? They, they beat <laughs> Alabama. They beat Alabama, one of the higher powerhouses of the college football world. Okay, cool. Georgia's like an Alabama in itself, producing players left and right in the NFL. So, I mean, Tennessee Bennett's going to light that? up Tennessee. Are you saying Tennessee hasn't done that? They're going to volunteer themselves out of the stadium with how oh, bad yeah. uh, how bad okay. Georgia's going to be. Them. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hendon Hooker, he, he has received Peyton Manning's blessing to become the new Messiah for the volunteers <laughs> and <laughs> of all hail Kevin <laughs> Hooker. Oh, did he, did he volunteer him? No, but um, I, I, Tennessee is going to win this. I'm not saying it's going to be an easy match. It's going to be a tough match both sides. I think it's going to be high scoring. I honestly don't know if it'll be high scoring. Though. <laughs> all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is the only guy who thinks George is going to win is not wearing a tie right now. So I'm trusting the Tennessee guys on this one. But anyway, with basketball season right around the corner, we at Sports Talk in the Berg are really excited for the matchups coming up for the RMU Colonials. This week, we're gonna, or right now, we're going to talk about the women's team. Guys, which team are you excited for the Colonials to take on this season? Sam? Me, personally, I know... I know they're playing some big opponents early on in the in the season, but for me, it's gotta be West Virginia. I mean, so it's it's right it's right down the road. There's I I expect some Colonial fans to be there. At I mean, it's not that far of a drive. I I really believe in this freshman class coming in. Yes, I know Sol. Yes, I know Sol Castro is a big is a big loss, but I feel like there's a lot of talented freshmen coming in, and I really look forward to that West Virginia matchup just because it's right down the road. Now, I know me and Casey, we're on the same wavelength here. I got, I got Oklahoma, Oklahoma game. But no, what, do you, what do you think about this? Uh, so, yeah, as you said, the freshman class, they have a lot of promise. And this is the first time that RMU will be playing Oklahoma in their entire history. In Oklahoma right now, preseason rankings, they're number 15 team in the country. And that's probably a big, you know, intimidating matchup. But it's also the biggest opportunity a lot of these players will ever get. And I expect them to take that with full grasp and make it a good game because it's college basketball anything can happen. So I'm really excited to see what they do with this big chance. I agree. I agree. And plus, uh, plus they are in the same conference, uh, yeah. which is a big thing. Uh, plus, like I said, Oklahoma, I think it's going to be a great game. And I also have them because, because of how high they ranked in preseason rankings. I, I have Oklahoma taking this. Right. I, taking, I, I, think it's gonna be a big I really I really like the West Virginia game, however, because I feel like West Virginia is a much more beatable team than Oklahoma. That's I feel true. like it'll be a much more competitive game for the Colonials because you know West Virginia being not I wouldn't say West West Virginia is not as talented as Oklahoma, but they're a little bit better than they're a little bit better than Robert Morris. So I really feel like that this game could be really competitive when it comes when it comes down to the nitty gritty. West Virginia is also kind of dirty though. I mean, have you been there? 
It's just not. It's just, <laughs> I mean, plus, plus, I feel like their players are some pretty dirty players. Oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Moving on to the men's team. Which team are you excited to see take on Andy Tool's Merry Men in a grand matchup? Nate, who are you excited to see? Uh, so, for me, I'm going to take Dayton. Dayton. The Dayton game is going to be playing in Dayton on November 19th at Dayton, yes. Uh, and re currently, Dayton... Dayton is currently ranked 24th in preseason, which I mean, which is the is which is the one of the only teams that uh, one of the only teams that is ranked that RMU is going to be facing. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe Dayton has Steph Curry. We don't know that, but for me, maybe you know a little bit out there. But I'm gonna say Pitt Greensburg. <laughs> 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 okay. 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 Say, 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 your, say your pitch. Okay. Say your pitch. They're, they're, say your pitch. they're coming off. Uh, that is the game after the Ohio State game. Okay, and so. Uh, barring anything crazy happening, they're probably going to get blown up by Ohio State because Ohio State is one of the best teams yeah. in the country. Uh, so you, think it's so you a redemption never game? know, though. Never you know. Never know. It's so it's going to be a redemption game, basically. It's going to be a redemption game. It's going to be a, a big game. And even just to say that you beat Pitt, even though you have to whisper Greensburg at the end, I feel like it's, it's just a nice transition game where they can figure themselves out going into the Horizon League season. And also, I have a friend that goes there, so I really just want to make fun of him when I'm <laughs> on the <team. laughs> um, One of my games that I really look forward to is the Marshall game. Um, Really, just it's it's going to be a home game as well. So I really like the fact that Marshall's coming here um, to play the Colonials, and I feel like there's going to be a really good atmosphere. I would say something almost similar similar as the first game that was ever played at the UPMC Event Center, as it was uh, the wow Pittsburgh coming in and taking on taking on Robert Morris. I feel like it's going to be that same type of game day atmosphere. The Colonials are going to be crazy, and it's it's going to be an all it's going to be a great atmosphere. So that's the game that I look forward to for the most for the men's squad. Come back. We're heading down to the stock market by or sell right here on Sports Talk in the Berg. We'll be back soon. The death of George Floyd, who died in police custody Monday night. Turning my pain into purpose is pretty much what I have done to start this foundation. It's going to take more than just us, you know, as a foundation. It's going to take the community, the world, to help us make a change because. It, it just can't be us. Feel the beat of nature at a park or forest near you. Find a forest and music inspired by nature at discovertheforest.org. Welcome back to Sports Talk in the Berg, folks. To begin our buy and sell portion, we decided to head down to the races. As on Sunday, to make the final four, Ross Chastain rode the wall to make it in, in the top four. Do you think NASCAR will make a new rule based off of this? Nate, as a car fan yourself, are you buying or selling? Uh, so uh, I am. Uh, I'm selling this. I would love. I would love to. Uh, I would love to. I'd love to not buy it, but you know, uh, NASCAR does what NASCAR does. Um, and first off, this is something that I don't think we've seen in a long time, and something that I really hope they don't ban because um, uh, because it, it lit up the world. And in fact, at that track, at Martinsville track, that is the fastest, the fastest lap that was ever made going around turns three and four because the dude rode the wall. <laughs> It, he was, gained, it was a literal cheat code. Yeah, he gained five <laughs> spots. This was the final lap of this race. Yeah, he gained five spots. Nuts. He is now in the final four with Chase Elliott, which is my leader to win the whole thing, Ross Chastain himself, um, Joey Logano, and Christopher Bell. And out of those four, I, I see Chase Elliott winning, but Ross Chastain, he snuck in. Yeah, all the, all the, all, every time, you know, everybody, you're watching an NFL game, oh, he's got video game-like moves. I mean, my goodness. Like, that's, that's like a 1,000 IQ type of play. Like, everybody's like, oh, you know, you got to follow the unwritten rules of NASCAR. Like, don't do that. Ross Chastain said, <laughs> hold my beer. I got that. <laughs> he, was, he was like, I'm going to take NASCAR left turn to a whole new level. I mean, 
That, I was watching that race, and my jaw just dropped. Exactly. I was like, did he just do that? That was <laughs> nuts. I'm, uh, I'm selling this idea as well that NASCAR will uh, not, that will, they won't change a rule about it. Because what, rule, like, what penalty could you get? Mm -hmm. I, I, if you really think about it. I mean, I'm selling here, too, because unless they don't like views and money, they're not going to change the rule. Because I'm not going to lie, I had no idea NASCAR was even going on at this point. What? Until, <laughs> until I saw Ross Chastain bring out moves from the GameCube. So <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that a lot of other people are now into NASCAR and watching it now and know it's happening because of this move. So if the first thing they do with these new viewers is ban what drew them in, then, then that, they're going to lose viewers again. And so. You say you don't watch NASCAR that much. You have to be a Formula One fan. I do. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> the NBA season is in full swing, and the Portland Trailblazers are 6-2 on this year. With this surprising start, Portland may be on the path to the playoffs. Sam, are you buying or selling? I am selling this idea that the Portland Trailblazers are going to make the playoffs. I mean, hey... You, the Philadelphia Flyers are on a, a great start as well. I don't think they're making the playoffs. The Portland Trailblazers, I just don't think they have enough depth on the roster. Yeah, yeah, you know, you, you can be. <laughs> Gary Payton. <laughs> Gary Payton. <laughs> Gary Payton. Gary <laughs> Payton. He's that man in his headband. Yeah, come, Damian Lillard. I, you know, Damian Lillard's so loyal, but that loyalty is not going to drag him to the playoffs. Let's be honest yeah, here. I'm selling this Anthony idea. Anthony Simons, dog, dog. Nurkic. Dog. dog. Who else? Gary Payton. Dog. <laughs> Jeremiah Grant. Another great pickup. And unless I'm, I'm buying that they make the playoffs because unless they have a catastrophic meltdown, I think they've built themselves to a very solid team to finally maybe help Dame not cry himself to sleep every time he watches <laughs> the playoffs. Yes. So I mean, I don't see them going far in the playoffs, but I think they definitely are a playoff team. Oh, yeah, I, I completely agree. I'm buying this as well. They are definitely seeming to be a playoff team, especially with the way they're playing and I think the way their schedule is going to play out. It's just so early in the season. I mean, though, they like, beat the Suns. They beat the okay, Nuggets. Okay, cool. It's it's still early in the season. Yeah, the, the Sixers are off to a 4-4 four and four start, and they're going to make the playoffs. Like, cool. <laughs> oh, my goodness. No way. Are the Nets making the playoffs? No. Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's early in the season. You can't tell. <laughs> yeah, you can't tell. Oh, Aaron Judge is a free agent in this offseason, and a few teams are vying for his talent, including the Dodgers, the Angels, and, of course, the Yankees. Are you buying that L.A. is buying, Casey? Uh, I'm actually selling. Uh, I mean, I think they're definitely going to try, but I don't think I see Aaron Judge going to the Dodgers. I think the Dodgers probably have the most money to spend. Obviously, we know that because they're the Dodgers, and they <laughs> just whip money at your face like you're – I'm not going to say that. <laughs> uh, but but, <laughs> but, but I, I won't be surprised if he does leave the Yankees. I mean, it would be really funny if he goes to the Angels and they miss the playoffs again. <laughs> that would just be comedy. But, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely – Definitely selling that they that the Dodgers signed Judge. I'm also going to sell this as well, but I do think he he will go to the West Coast. I think the San Francisco Giants are going to sign Aaron Judge. Aaron, it's been good. rumored that they're going all in on Aaron Judge. It makes sense too uh, with the talent that they have locked. And I feel like Aaron Judge would be a perfect spot for San Francisco for the Giants because well. They do have that short right field wall as well, so be, it would still be like playing in Yankee Stadium almost. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> but uh, what do you think, Nate? Uh, well, I'm also selling this as well. I think we're all on the same, same page here because I don't see him going anywhere. I, I really don't because Ooh. I don't see him going. I don't. Um, after Yankees fans literally booed, booed him, him in the playoffs? Yeah, exactly. You really think he's going to stay there after the Yankees literally booed the man that broke <laughs> the AL home run record? Exactly. I, I mean, <laughs> so Yankees fans are just messed up. I'm just going to say that. If you're a Yankees fan, you need to stop. Okay. <laughs> because stop this is, existing. <laughs> 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 okay, stop being a Yankees fan. No, I'm just, let's just, I'm just end it there. Man, poor Yankees fans. We're, we're just going after them today. I, I don't think they deserve that. The RMU men's soccer team clinched a playoff spot with a dominant 5-0 win over IUPUI. Are you buying a championship run for the Colonials, Nate? Uh, so I am, uh, I'm selling this. I'm selling this. I'm not buying this. Uh, yes, I, today they did They did make it into the actual playoffs, thank God, with a, I think it was a 5-0 win. Um, but... I don't see them going the whole way. There's, uh, with the way they've played this season, I don't think they're going to make it the whole Do way. Do you believe in miracles, Nate? Yes, but I don't believe okay, in this well, miracle. Okay, well, guess what? I don't believe in Guess this what? I am buying the idea 
that the men's soccer team is going to Why? make it. Going Why? to. They had. They just. They. They. This was that, a do that, or yeah. die. Say, stop it. <laughs> this, was, this was a do or die game for the Colonials yes. here, and the fact that they can come out and win five nothing to a team that's already in the playoffs. I mean, come on now. They have the momentum fully in their court, and I. And I really do believe that this team could go far. I mean, pulling five goals off against already a playoff contender. I mean, that's that and alone. I am riding the wave of the men's team to win the Horizon League. Are, 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 are you really, though? Because, I mean, you said they, that it's going in their, in their court. court. They're, yeah, they're, they're, on, they're on the field, man. Oh, my they're goodness. Not on the oh, my goodness. What are you talking about? Blah, blah, yeah, blah, 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 blah. You don't have no faith in the Colonials. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. You're right. Neither do I, because I'm selling, <laughs> because you are nuts. <laughs> How am I nuts? How, tell me. Tell me, Casey. How am I nuts? Get a tie. Button your top Hey, it's not my fault that I have to fill in late, so. Okay, okay, okay. They're they're not. Not, they're no, they're just not gonna win. Why? Are, why? why, why can't they, you? I mean, what was the first time they've scored this many goals in however long? They they're not gonna be able to solve all their problems so quick. I mean, the defense is still pretty playing pretty well. Frazier Shelley is very good, but I just don't I just don't see the run happening. I think it's a good season, but it's not gonna end in glory. When we come back, the guys will give you their final takes right here on Sports Talk in the Bird. Stay with us. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover their unique mix of all kinds of traits. Where'd Wiley go? Where's Wiley? Ah, uh, there she is. Pa? Do you remember being an ancient wolf? Do you ever feel the call of the wild? You're a renegade cop, and I'm a con woman with nothing to prove. But together, we could really solve this murder. They're a little bit of a lot of things. But all of them are pure love. Welcome back to Sports Talk in the Berg, folks. It's time for our final takes. First up, it's Goldberg, who's going to bowl us away. That is right. So there are so many people around the world that think bowling is the most easiest sport in the world, which mind boggles me. I mean, how typical is it for somebody to, to get a 300? I mean, seriously, bowling, like, there's so many different factors. Like, I... People are just like, oh, I can just throw the bumpers up. Well, that's not. That's not how bowling works. Like, that's taking the easy way out. I mean, Jesse over here thinks that bowling is super easy just because he rolled a 300 on Wii Sports. Like, oh, congratulations. But, real, but bowling a 300 is probably the most difficult thing to do because it involves luck, and you have to have a little bit of skill. But sometimes that 10-pin will just not fall, and then you stare at it to fall, and it just doesn't. And but it takes so much dedication and time. I mean, my, me and myself, I haven't bowled a 300 yet either. I've be, I've came so close, a 298 here and a 299 there. But to the people that think bowling is so easy, I want to know why. Like you just show up with your house shoes and house bowling ball, and I just can't. I don't get it. So bowling a bowling a 300 and bowling, it's not as easy as people seem. All right, so uh, with Chase Claypool being traded to the Bears, the Steelers are at the end of an era. The TikTok Steelers era, that is. This all started when the previous Corvette Corvette boy, a.k.a. ex-Steelers wide receiver, Juju Smith-Schuster. This made the Steelers a punching bag for the media, and when Claypool added to this, the Steelers wide receivers became a laughing stock in the NFL world and the sports world. Now that Chase Claypool has been traded to the Bears, we won't see any more bad Steelers 
players doing TikToks. Uh, but there still is uh, uh, Marcus Allen, who was part of the whole TikTok story thing. But yeah, we won't talk about that. Anyway, uh, I still wish the best uh, of luck to Chase Claypool, as he will be a top three wide receiver on the Bears, that is. Do you guys know the World Series is going on? Apparently everyone else around here didn't. But, you know, because of this, it's time to start stocking up on your necessities. Go fill up some containers of gas, get your toilet paper, get your canned goods, your Campbell's soup, whatever you want. Because, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, the Philadelphia Phillies are on the verge of winning the World Series, which means an economic crisis is on the horizon. Even though the Astros are probably cheating again, you know, uh, they're still pulling a Yankees-esque choke job. And every time the Phillies won the World Series, horrible things happen for the economy. They won in 1929, and well, if you don't know what happened that year, then the education, education system failed you. Uh, in 1980, they won, and then the oil crisis struck. Then the U.S. went through the Great Recession after they won in 2008. So people, before disaster hits this country due to Bryce Harper and the dirty Philadelphians, because they're dirty, sorry Goldberg, learn from the pandemic and go stock up on what you need while you can. Uh, okay, so I know I know you were bashing what? Wii Sports Bowling. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Don't hate. What are you doing? Uh, but, uh, anyway, on a serious note, regular bowling, I will say, it is def it definitely requires some skill. Thank you. It definitely does, although... I don't see myself bowling a 300 anytime soon. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, I, so that proves my point. Do you, do you put the curve on the ball? Oh, yeah, dude. Uh, well, I don't bowl with a thumb, so I just bowl with my middle finger and ring finger. Now, how heavy of a bowl do you bowl? Yeah. 15 pounds. 15 pounds, okay. That's I, I use that sometimes. Max limit, like, legal limit is 16. So I'm almost I'm almost there. You know, one time I actually I bowled the ball, and I, I had the bumpers on just so I could do whatever wow. I wanted. And so I just... Chucked it as hard as I could. It bounced six times, hopped over, and got a strike on another lane. It was the, <laughs> the coolest thing you've ever seen in your entire oh, life. So you're, if so I could just do that, and I think bowling's pretty. Oh yeah. Awesome. Now, um, so you're the person now, okay. that I would hate at a bowling alley. Good to know. <laughs> okay. Now, okay. How about so the, I'm going to stay as far away from you <laughs> as possible. All right. Let's talk about this World Series right now. I mean, honestly, the Phillies. You think they're going to win the whole thing? Oh, 100. Well, percent Of oh course you are. Gosh. You're a Philadelphian. <laughs> you're a Philadelphian. Of I mean, course come you're going to You got Aaron win. Nola starting tonight, and he's been dominant uh, the, the is, in the post. The season. thing is, is the uh, I, I don't see the. Uh, it's gonna be real hard for the Astros to win two games in Philly. And, like they they have to. Tr it's gonna be a struggle to win these. There was the, seismic the, activity the, registered. The atmosphere at the that that game in Philadelphia was unheard of, unseen, and uh, do, you, do you think they can pull out with these? The next two games are gonna be at Philadelphia. Do you think the Astros can pull out of there? I just said no. No. Well, do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Do you think, do you think they are? I mean, honestly, I don't know if they are. I don't. I don't know if they are because the way the astro the uh, the atmosphere is there. I don't know if they are. I thought Christian, you were just starting. Thing. You thought the Phillies weren't going to win. Well, I don't want them to win, but they might. <laughs> and if like, they do, we're going to have an economic crisis. The Astros, the Astros have Christian Javier going. He's a really young pitcher who's pitched well in the postseason. I will give him that, but he's pitched well at home, and he has yet to be in a hostile environment like Philadelphia. I don't know if you've seen the TikToks around Twitter, something like that, of the of what Lance McCullers got yesterday. That was so good. So, so good. I mean, yeah, and I might have to take a quick Sam's Club trip to stock up on some stuff because, I mean, we know what <laughs> happened when the pandemic hit. Everything was done, and now, with the Phillies going to win the World Series, which the last two times they've won the World Series, uh, you know, the U.S. has had a uh, they've had some struggle town yeah. a little yeah, bit. The, the uh, great, great, great depression, the uh, great recession. Uh, yeah, there's, there's something rhymes with Eshin every time. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's true. If you look at the stats, it's just scientifically proven. So, like, like, statistically proven. It's going to be the great recording session next. Well, I, if you're wondering, maybe, uh, Casey, how are you just going to say that, you know, that that's how, you know, the, all these economic crises have happened? Well, thank Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> because online sources are really reliable. So, uh, you know, I think it was the CBS Sports Instagram that I got off of where they, you know, uh, all the economic crisis happened. And, you know, it's, so if you're taking econ right now uh, in any classes, just saying, might want to pay attention a little more so you know what's going on. <laughs> Maybe start looking at some stocks. I don't know. No crypto. Don't, <laughs> for, your, for your own good, no crypto. But ladies and gentlemen, Phillies in 
five, dude. I mean, there's there. You want to be sons and four so bad? It what? just doesn't work. Yeah. What do you what, what do you mean? What do you what do you mean, man? I mean, come mm -hmm. on, you got Aaron mm -hmm. Nola mm -hmm. on the mound. He's got he's gonna shove, dude. He's gonna shove so hard. Yeah, okay, man. But how do you feel about being an economic uh, economic yeah. crisis? You, you are gonna be. I don't care. <laughs> I got, <laughs> the Phillies got a world championship. <laughs> Someone could be living under a bridge, starving because of you and your Phillies. That's fine. <laughs> Suffer. <laughs> Though we may be on the verge of economic crisis, that is all that we have here at Sports Talk in the Berg. From everyone upstairs and downstairs, we may not have a roof next time. We'll see. We'll see you next week.